What's good, Waging World? This is your boy Five Star in Vegas, broadcasting live as always from beautiful Summerlin, Nevada. In here with my co host, my guy, the only Sacramento Kings fan that I know. What's good, Spread Star? How are you today? Man, I feel like Vladi Divac after making that heat pick last <laughs> night, right? I mean, how could you get it any, any more wrong, right? Put it right next to that mm -hmm. Marvin Bagley pick for, for some of the all worst right. picks of all time. Uh, but let's jump right into it. Obviously, uh, you nailed it right on the head, but go ahead and review some of the reasons you liked Boston. And, and then, of course, some of the things you saw as they just absolutely embarrassed the Miami Heat. Um, as I told you, the very proud team, I knew Boston hasn't lost two games all season they make the best adjustments in the league and i just you saw that last night um marcus smart is the leader of that team he's huge for that team he brings all of the uh fire and all of the defensive responsibilities uh to that team and uh he did a great job you know jimmy butler's a hell of a player you can't really stop him uh, when his mind is set on uh, being effective but they did slow him down and make things difficult as they said they riled him a little bit and the main thing was exactly as we spoke about yesterday i told you the others from miami are very pedestrian they have games where uh they shoot lights out in the regular season and can step up but i don't see them consistently doing in this playoff series similar to the books uh, when they need it the most i don't think they're going to be able to stand up uh, when the Celtics come bring their best A ball because the Celtics just have a much better roster uh, than the Miami Heat do, does. And I was very surprised with you liking the Heat yesterday because we spoke about this before uh, the series yeah. started. You was, you agree with me. You were on the Celtics. I also talked to Ski about that too. I texted him and told him, man, what are you doing? Because he took the Heat with you yesterday. So yeah. obviously you and him usually read a lot of games the same way. So obviously you guys saw something in game one that made you think the game two um, would be, um, you know, pretty much the same script with Miami being able to handle the business at home. But we all know the Celtics are just a better team. And with the book saying that they were uh, favored in the series, even though they were the road team in the series, uh, you knew they had to get one or at least uh, at least one, maybe even two in Miami. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to run right here from what the books are showing with them showing six and a half for the game in Boston. They're not showing a lot of respect to Miami and they're seeing the same things and the same uh, problems that the Miami Heat are going to face with their limited roster. Yeah, I mean, uh, and yesterday I gave you a little pushback on there, the better team, but I'm ready to concede that point. Um, you, you're, you're so right. I just love the way, and I knew that individually, right, if you traded the pieces off, that the Celtics had a, a better individually roster, right? But I thought the way that the Heat played together um, was going to shine through. So, so two things really hurt me yesterday. Obviously, PJ Tucker not being available. Um, but to be fair, I'm not using that as an excuse because the game was out of hand when he got hurt. Okay. Yeah, it was. But, but, but we keep an eye on that going forward. And the other thing that we keep an eye on that really killed me, and a lot of people have been telling me this, and I don't know what to make of him as a player going forward here, is the disappearance of Bam Adebayo. I mean, I don't know who's had a worse postseason, him or DeAndre Ayton, because yeah. these are two guys that we just loved, and we said these guys have so much talent. These are blue-chip talents, right? They're high athletes. They defend. They're two-way players. Uh, they don't get played off the floor on the switch, and they have the offensive there. And I thought both players played play, play pretty well defensively, even DeAndre Ayton, right, For even though he didn't get things done on the offensive end. Uh, I thought he held his own on the defensive end. I think Bam's been even better on the defensive end, but you talked about the lack of weapons on this team. And if Bam's not there to help out, right. And, and you got to have, you know, a role player having a career Bruce. night every single night. That kind of not, your blue missing. chip guy got to get you there. Your yeah. blue chip guy yeah. got to get you there. And, and I'm not going to blame Struess or Vincent for the loss, right? It's on hero. It's on Bam. And, and I thought Jimmy played well and, and no one was there with him. So uh, yeah. once again, the Celtics showed, Hey, um, you know, even if we don't have the best guy on the floor, we're the best team on the floor. And with how well they played, it didn't matter. I still think Spolster is better th than Udoka, but it didn't matter. There was no move he can make. So, yeah, uh, you know, th that was a great pick there um, for you last night. You want to start talking about this evening? Because uh, I think we have a fun game going down in Golden State tonight. Yeah, I definitely want to get to a ball and parlay. But just last thing about that series. Um, why well, I said, like, like you said, it's not Struce and Vincent, they aren't to blame. It's Hero and Bam. And it gets down to what Bam's issue is. I don't like the way Spolster uses them and him in offense. He turns them pretty much into a, a glorified points forward. 
uh, in their offense. He doesn't really even get looks or isolations where he can, you know, go to work ever to take advantage of his uh, uh, the, the advantage that he may have on offense. He's always seems like he's in a position to be set up a, a, a three point shot or to uh, get Butler a screen or something. He never uh, is the first option. So I kind of blame uh, uh, Spolster for how he's using Bam on why Bam's like because he he obviously is trying hard. He's playing defense still. You know, it's not like he's like yeah. checked out. Aiden was kind of checking out a little bit that last game. Bam isn't checking out. He just isn't getting the right type of offensive look. So I'd be interested to see how that goes forward as we look at the Celtics rosters, I told you, man, from top to bottom, how many first-round picks is on that team. Even Peyton Pritchard, we're talking about him, but he was a top – he still is a first-round pick, you know what I mean? So the Celtics yeah. have really, really a dangerous team and a very talented team, and I look for uh, them and the Warriors to face off in the finals because they both have the most talented teams left and they're the best three-point shooting teams left too both of those teams you saw how the stuff got on <laughs> i was thinking about you know? this morning right think about this morning right i said i'll take my mm-hmm. lumps i'm not gonna fade the celtics i mean maybe maybe in a spot in game five right but i'm probably not yeah, gonna go five, to the celtics five. again right yeah. i'm probably you know I'll, I'll, I'll probably i'm not saying i'm even gonna bet on them i'm just saying i'm probably not gonna go get Celtics again for a couple games but i feel like i'm gonna go right back <laughs> all the same stuff uh, when they play the Warriors because I'll yeah. probably be on the Warriors in that series. But we have plenty of time. That we might not even time. be the series. Might not yeah. even be the series, right? It the will Warriors be. only got ahead 1-0. So, so, okay, yeah, you, you, think so. you, you think so. Let's get to the bottom so. man. Yeah, let's, let's jump in. So so Golden State at Dallas tonight. Um, so you, you already know, because you know, we talked a little bit, you know that I, I do like the Warriors here. Uh, maybe feeling a little gun shy after completely missing last night's game, but you know, uh, off last night's game, does Dallas kind of have the similar issue that, that Miami has where they got one guy who's a stud, just a stud and he's just surrounded by a bunch of role players. I mean, we like Jalen Brunson. We like Jalen Brunson. Um, but is he easy to get Jordan Poole? I, I don't know. Clay Thompson, I don't like him guy. as a Robin. I don't like him as a Robin. I like him as a C or a D option. A number yeah, three or four yeah. Option, yeah. Yeah, Dan Whitty, I don't know if I necessarily trust him. Now, this series can turn around so quickly, right? Because they were 11 from 48 from, from three. They, they yeah. weren't contested looks. They weren't throwing up bad looks. If those shots fall, number one, you're getting the three points on the board. Number two, the Warriors have to play in half court and not in transition. And we know the Warriors are one of the best transition teams in the league. So um, while I'm not saying the Warriors are shooing, that's the way I'm looking tonight. And that's kind of where um, my best bet is going to correlate here when, when we give it out. But let me hear your thoughts on the game, and then I'll go ahead and give you uh, my official okay. pick because it correlates to me liking the Warriors tonight, but it's not simply take the Warriors on the spread. I'm definitely afraid of dealing with the Warriors at Chase Center. You have said all – all NBA season, don't bet the Warriors against the Warriors at home. They're a great home team, and I agree with you. Difficult bet, especially it's fourth quarter, third quarter. They're unbelievable. I do like the Mavs first half. I love the way Jason Kidd, uh, similar to Coach Udoka, makes adjustments uh, following a loss. Uh, he usually doesn't let a team beat him the same way twice. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Mavs start very fast this game and I'd like them probably to cover the first half and maybe even win, maybe to be leading at halftime. But uh, the Warriors are too much after uh, it gets past the half. I think that they'll be able to execute too well. And once again, it'll be all on Luka. Uh, and I think Luka steps up. Everybody was talking about him this game. He had 20 points. Uh, to most people, that's still a good playoff game. But for him, that's nothing. So uh, I expect him to bounce back strongly. And that's one of the bottom parlay. Uh, we're both staying away from sides. We've got a, a couple of props. You're going with the team total, right? And I'm going to go with a player total. Uh, I got to go with Luca going over 31 and a half today, Spread. I mean, um, this is pretty much a legacy game for him. I know it's a young legacy, but it's the type of game that he has to clap back because he looked so bad. It doesn't. It's not good for his brand. At the end of the day, these guys are, are businesses. They're, uh, they're like Jay Z said, uh, uh, "Not a businessman. I'm a business man. He's a business." So. Luca has to show up for his brand tonight, and uh, he's right now being uh, looked at as the number one player in the world. Uh, I'm sure he has enough uh, sense to understand that, that hey, uh, tonight I got to come to play. Uh, everyone's expecting a big game from him. I expect him to get around 35. Uh, I expect a quick start from him. I expect Jason Kidd to set up ways for him to get some good looks. If he gets that 31 and a half, you also probably want to look at over the three and a half for him on the three pointers um, because, as you know, he's a major deep shooter that step back three point is his main 
go-to move. So if he's cooking and getting over 31 and a half, he's most likely going to have four or five three-pointers mixed in there. So uh, I'm definitely going with Luke over 31 and a half. And I tell everybody why you like the Warriors for the total over 109 and a half, which I do it like. I like that as well. Yeah, and it's correlated to the over. It's correlated to the over. But I have myself a little protection if the Warriors do get the blowout again, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, if Dallas, you know, plays the scenario that you think, they come out, they you know, they get that first half, this is going to be great for the over. If Dallas gets the win, right, which, which you know, we like the Warriors here, but it's not impossible. I think yeah. this game goes over, right? I think they do it in a high pace up and down uh, the court game. This game seems to have a lot of pace, you know. Uh, just like I said last night, you know, both these teams need to get in transition to have an advantage on offense. We're, we've seen, you know, four of the best half-court uh, defensive teams last night. And that game last night, you know, uh, it, it went over fairly easy, right? It ended at 229. Yeah on a what a 205 total so yeah. um you know <laughs> went off at 207 my one of my clients he was telling me all day like hey man i'm going with the over i'm going with the over and yeah. i was just telling him, like i don't know i don't really deal with spreads so i was like i'm gonna ask spread and ask ski because anytime one of my clients asks me anything about totals i'll text you guys because i tell them tell them all the time i don't even deal with totals i let you guys you guys pretty much uh, specialize in that but I did tell him yeah take Boston first half for the game and the reason why is because I was like you're not going to be able to catch up after the first half and exactly like that's what happened uh, so it was a great bet uh, all three ways around he won so you're right the over flew over last night yeah and I think we got another case here um, with it, this game tonight but like I said by taking the team total and not the complete game total um, I'm giving myself a little bit of that blow up protection because hey you know let, let's take a step back and maybe um, you know, I should have looked at this a little bit more in the Boston Celtics last series. It was back and forth in yeah. the Dallas Mavericks last series. Home court ruled the day. Right. Yeah. Until game seven, when Dallas yep. was able to pull off the upset. But Dallas yep. got Dallas got blown out two zero. I remember on my other show, we were writing their eulogy after game two. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. previewing Phoenix and the Warriors. Right. And we were arguing about that because Dallas looked bad those first two games. And. And this game is more important for Golden State tonight than Dallas. As much yeah. as I know you say it's a legacy game for Luka, and I expect him to have a good performance, and I like your play. I think they know we can go down 2-0, go home, and make our adjustments and come back, and then we just got to win two of the next three. Plus, we get game six in Dallas. So, um, yeah. you know, I actually think, you know, I, though this is a game the Warriors have to win tonight. They really need it. And I felt that, you know, to kind of back backtrack to that last series, it's a tough scene for Miami now, right? To, to lose that yeah. game too, because we talked about it before yesterday. And I said, Hey, you know, even though Boston lost that game one, they, they, right. They, you know, they go back home one, one, they're feeling great. And, and that's yeah. the situation that happened. So the, the Warriors know, right. And they've been really good at home. Uh, not only this year, they're now 37 to 38 and 10. I can't remember if we're adding in the last game or not. Um, and they've traditionally, protected home court very well uh, in the playoffs in that in that wild chase center and you see how those those fans are and you see how that yeah. team is steph curry's out there and i know there's a bunch of people that don't like him because he's doing it right dancing around after he, he earned it he this earned the front running team yeah. and, and yeah. once they get hot it's just it just feels like an avalanche there so yeah. um you know i like golden state but i'm gonna go with the team total as the way that i'm gonna approach this but as you know, they say that the series doesn't begin until someone wins on the road. So we have yeah, a series exactly. with the Boston and um, Miami series. Now we still don't have a series. Like you say, everybody just holding court. You can't get it, uh, you know, your mind too wrapped around the fact that Golden State is doing what they're supposed to do, and that's winning home. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do win again tonight. But as I told you, I do expect Dallas uh, to come out fast this game. And then in this, as the game goes on. Here's my ideal road. wagering situations. Uh, Dallas wins the first half. Yeah. Then I bet Golden State third quarter. Third quarter. Then I bet Dallas Can't game three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 That that, that's always the way I'm works. looking at it right now. That's the way I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Right. Because so, you know one thing about spread is we watched Golden State, and especially this season, they did the same thing against uh, Memphis. When they blow these teams out like this, they come out a little lack of day school the next they game. Do. The game. They, they do. They feel like they out there joking like, around. Yeah. 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 They, they got too much confidence guys. sometimes because it felt like against Memphis, they were throwing games away because yeah. it felt, and at the end they were right. 
Um, but boy, you know, uh, be careful doing that. And I know Steve Kirk is frustrated with it. Yeah. And, and I don't think it's a coaching issue. I think it's these guys and no. you need that level of confidence to get to be the players that they are. Right. Because, you know, uh, a lot of that's these Steph. guys defy the odds. Draymond's not even with it. That's Steph, but if you man, think that's... about it, Draymond's a second round pick. Right. So he's obviously yeah. got more confidence in himself than everyone else. What's Steph go? I'm trying to remember yeah. seventh. Seven, seven. He should have went he higher. Wasn't. The only reason he didn't go higher was because his ankle. Remember, he was the hottest name coming out well, of college. Yeah, and then also, yeah, and that ankle problem man. flared up for the first couple of years of his career. Yeah, so it looked like it, it looked like it was correct. And then, if I'm trying to remember right, what did Clay go? Ten or thirteen? Uh, between ten and thirteen. So somewhere these guys were all overlooked at, at yeah. some point, and you know they, they've they've showed the confidence in themselves. Um, to go ahead and, and get things done. So now, now that they do that, right, they do have that irrational confidence, and I think that they sometimes uh, do not treat their opponents with the respect they should. So let's hope they do it tonight for, for the sake, yeah. sake of my bet, all right? And I think that, uh, you know, it's so funny. On these Luca point totals, if I'm on the other side, I'm not even worried about it because it just feels like he can get 35 and, and they could still lose by 10 or 15, you know? Yeah. Uh, if they're going to cover this game, of course, Luca's going to have the nice night. But they're going to need a night from Jalen Brunson. They're going to need a night from Dinwiddie. One, at least one of the two, right? And then they're, they're going to need a night Kleber. from Bertans need... and Kleber. And they, they need a, a just yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Bertans and Kleber are the most important, in my yeah. opinion, spread. Because I feel like if Luka does the over 31 and a half that I'm giving out, just because that's simpler and we know that these uh, official scores do the assist. And we had an issue, remember, early in the year when I had Harden and we knew he went over, but they didn't. No, Kyrie. You know what's funny, though? Over. We didn't take advantage of it tonight. The Warriors guy is the most – the Warriors home score is the most um, – what's the word? Uh, giving on the assists. He'll give them assists for anything, for, for almost teams, anything. Just the Warriors. Just the Warriors. Just okay. so you know. Okay. When, the Warriors are at home. Their assist props are a way to look because, the okay. guy, I mean, you you could pass it. The guy could dribble five times, do a turnaround, you get the assist. Like The, the guy gives assist for everything. So. Draymond, then. Draymond's probably the look on that one. He's probably like five and a half. He's yeah. probably the look on that one. I think he's but a I'm... look in DFS tonight, too, as well, okay. at, at his price point. I think that he'll be in a lot of my lineups. I haven't built them yet, um, mm -hmm. but my guess is, is he has a big night, especially um, for, for me to get there. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, this game should be a lot of fun tonight, though. It's going to be uh, fun. Like I, I think said, this I'm weekend's going to be even more fun, though. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have some great weekend games so, coming up. let's give them a preview. They're going to go back to Boston tomorrow night, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be on Boston again at the 6? Six, six all, all over. It's them. really hard to get back on Miami, right? No. They're gonna it be felt like they them. played their best game, and they won by 11 at home. And then Boston plays their best game, and they won by how much on, and they on the road? And control. Boston had full control of the game that they lost. If not for that unbelievable third quarter, Boston yeah. won every quarter. They won yeah. the fourth quarter. They won the yeah. second quarter. They won the first quarter. Yeah. So yeah. I don't see any – that's why the books is telling you six and a half is a huge number in an Eastern Conference final as for a spread. So I'm thinking that the Boston wins by double digits. Now the fourth game is when I might more be looking to the Heat. The Heat, they might go up to eight and a half and Boston blows them this next game. And then in the game four, I might look to go back with the Heat and they play. We'll, we'll, we'll be on the air for that one because that'll yeah. be Monday night. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll be on for that. We got a little USFL, too, uh, spreads. If you want to go in and put them in now, I'll give okay. it out to the people. We're going to go with uh, let me the Tampa up. Bay Bandits over the Philadelphia Stars. The Tampa Bay Bandits uh, minus What's three. What's the number there? Uh, it's a minus three. All right. No Tom Brady on this team, though, right? Right. Minus three. <laughs> and look, and we're also going with the uh, burning Birmingham Stallions. Minus seven against the Michigan Panthers. Birmingham is the most impressive team in the uh, uh, league. And no wonder that all their games are home games. You know, everybody's Minus playing the game seven. in Birmingham. So they have a great advantage. They've got have some great offensive weapons. We're throwing that in as a bonus for the weekend for you guys. Um, the USFL go with the Bandits minus three and the Stallions minus seven. And uh, tonight's spread says uh, over one and one oh nine and a half for the Warriors total. I see them getting there very easily, honestly, because uh, Dallas does play defense. But who's going to stop the Warriors at home from scoring over 100? 
So uh, I like that a lot. And I look for Luca to bounce back in a legacy game. He's He had a terrible showing last game. He didn't look anything like himself. Hey, you know, Spread, where a, a guy made a great point uh, on the air. I can't remember who said it. I was uh, driving and hearing some sports talk from some small um, radio station. And uh, the guy said, hey, the Warriors are smart. They're not talking. I think, you know what? I think it was um, Rick Buecher who covers the Warriors. Mm-hmm. He said that uh, the Warriors aren't saying anything to Luca. That's Draymond. He's smart. He probably told him in the locker room, hey, man, do not get this dude fired up. I so saw the same, same, the same idea yesterday. Did you see J.J. Redick on Trey Young's pod? No, I didn't. What did he, he say? Basically I basically asked him. He said, hey. hey. Star in a <laughs> he I said, like hey, it. when New York got on you, you kind of went off. And he's like, yeah. He's like, when I went to Miami, he's like, they didn't really say nothing to me. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> so the Warriors are playing nice guy. I think they're helping him up. Yeah. Give him a pat on the butt. But yeah, Draymond's probably telling nothing. him, like, you're a hell of a player, Luca. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> Luke, you're a hell of a player. And, and, and he, he Good can't, move. Good know, move. <laughs> he needs something. Some some guys need an edge. You know how Jordan used to try to create an edge. Yeah. Luca's a lot like that man, and he's getting you getting a, a, a the nice guy Luca. That's not working good. Well, for him, you know, and, and and just to play into that narrative a little more, right? We don't want to overreact to it, but they all say the turning moment was when Booker did that, and then uh, did you see the clip that was going around? And Luca's like, "Don't do that," you know, and called him, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, Luca called him a very foul name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. At that at the CP3 uh, uh, press conference with Booker, where they were trying to clown, him. yeah, but the were smart, they're not doing anything like that. And I can guarantee yeah. the leader of the locker room and the leader of that defense, Draymond, is the one that's telling them, like, hey, guys, do Just not get this guy alone. fired up. Yeah. You know, you notice Draymond's helping them up after he fouls yeah. and stuff, <laughs> like, it's all psychology, and I love it, man. Smart dude, yeah. Great player, man. Great player. Draymond will never get his respect that's due to him until he gets uh, put in the Hall of Fame. But I've been watching him for years, and he's the uh, he's kind of like on the uh, Temptations. You know how the Temptations stayed together because of the one guy who was the lead who never sung. He was the backup the whole yeah. time. And that's kind of like what Draymond does for his team. And now we're seeing Marcus Smart kind of become that same figure uh, for the Celtics, man, because uh, he's you saw the difference with Mar- Marcus Smart in the yeah. game yesterday, the difference he makes. He's cl- the, clearly the leader of that team. With all those uh, superstars and great scores, he's the leader. Uh, Spread has to get out of here. He got another show to do. Um, I got to go enjoy my weekend, man. It's a sunny day. It's kind of cool. I got a friend in town. It's his birthday. So uh, we'll be getting a couple sections tonight. Uh, luckily, these are older friends. So nobody so uh, phones off. Yeah. No, no video recordings are going on tonight. So yeah. if you guys out in town in Vegas, man, you see me, say hello, man. Um, With the phone in Monday your pocket. Through- yeah, like, exactly. Put the phone in your pocket. <laughs> put, but put your phone in your pocket. <laughs> Say, I'm taking up phones at the section when you check in. Like, <laughs> take them up like you're coming to a party in L.A., man. Hey, man, we really enjoyed you guys this week. Another winning week. We're already locked in. We're uh, four and one. There's no way that we can lose. We just gave you guys a couple bonuses so that you can win on the USFL this weekend. Follow my guy Spread at Spread the Stare. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, which is Spread the Stare. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Five Star in Vegas Sports Investments. And please follow me on Twitter at Five Star in Vegas. Spell out the five. We're on Schoon TV Monday through Friday. Subscribe to Schoon TV. You guys enjoy your weekend. Best of luck to you all.